All right. Yeah. So the radio group um, is, if you guys remember, like the group of buttons that you can just kind of click. And they're kind of like checkboxes, except you can only really select one at a time. Um, and so the listener for that is the on check change listener. It's a little unintuitive because you think, oh, it's check change. It's like the it's like the checkbox. But no, it's also for the one for the radio group. Um, so a lot of people selected on item selected. Yeah, that it, it definitely makes a lot of sense given the name. But um, this one, you just have to look look at the um, Android docs just to make sure what is the event listener. All right. Yeah, so split ticket here. Um, the correct way to create an empty activity for like the Kotlin views is the empty views activity. Um, so when you're doing your homework to and every other home or like future homeworks, um, you're gonna be using empty views activity. Um, now when we switch to Jetpack Compose, um, and that's gonna happen for homework four, that's gonna be the empty activity on the in the red there. So this is the Jetpack and Photos version, and the blue is the uh, like the regular like views version. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, we need an um, It's because it's, uh, it's the assignment was made before uh, Jetpack Compose was integrated. Yeah. Um, so I figured because <laughs> no one has showed up yet. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any needs any help, um, the office hours are always on the ed discussion. Yep, go ahead. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I was there. So, um, sorry for that. Like, so do you know where the eHub is? It's on the second floor, it's room 205. It's like right by the staircase. Did you go like at like five on the dot? Cause I was a little late, but. Oh, at four? Oh, okay. Um, the, the, the TA may not, may or may not have been there. Oh, sorry for that. Okay, yeah. Um the, the room is right, it's two oh five. Um I'll get in touch with the other TA, but yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> um so that was good review. Let's get right into lecture. This one is pretty packed, so we'll try and see how far we get. Um, but basically today we're gonna be going over more of the nitty gritty of like the how the Android app is structured. And so we're gonna go over like the Android manifest, like the Android lifecycle, and intents. So before we get into where we're going, um homework two is due Wednesday. Um, comes office hours if you need to. I'm going to make sure that all the TAs are going to office hours. <laughs> At least I was there. Um, enroll in Student Center if you haven't. And uh, yeah, so whoever has started it, how have you found the homework so far or has finished it even? Go ahead. What are you to use for the square? So the square? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's. No, I'm pretty, you can probably just use like, there's like a view, there's just like a blank thing that you can change the color of. Um, I forget the exact name, but I, I can, I can help you out with that after this lecture. Um, get the exact name, but yeah, it's a good question. All right. Uh, any other thoughts? <laughs> We're good. Go ahead.
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um what do you think here? We might not have covered this, but basically when you um have like a layout for like portrait mode and you turn your phone to the like turn the phone sideways, it actually destroys the activity and recreates it in the new layout. So you actually need to have two XMLs that define like both portrait and landscape mode. Um there, there should be there should be notes on that in the textbook, and if there isn't, let me know. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go right into it. Wait, did anyone have else have any questions on that? I think we're good. Um, so the activity lifecycle. This is basically all the callback functions that go around whenever you use an app. So when you first create an activity, an activity is, bit, you can think of it as synonymous with a screen. Uh, for every screen you have, you might have an activity that basically defines like the, um, the backend logic, like the business logic of the screen. And so when you start it, you're gonna see, you're gonna call on create, on start and on resume. So I think we've all seen on create. We're pretty familiar with that. That's for every activity. When you first initialize it, on create is called. And everything under on create will be like initialization code. So you're gonna like define like what buttons are associated with whatever like components in the UI, like what um, seek bars you have, stuff like that. And so on start is called immediately after create. So on start is basically thinking of like, um, what happens when the user first sees the, uh, sees the screen, but can't interact with it yet. So on start is called every time the user sees the screen. And on resume is like when the user is sees the screen and it's in the foreground. Um, and we'll we'll jump into that a little later. Um, so yeah, this is a good um, diagram for all the whole flow between the activity lifecycle. Um, and then like a little more clearer. So when you first create a screen, it's initialized. And when you first create it, it'll call on create. So everything. And on create will be called when you first um, like paint the screen. Uh, but then when it ends up showing on the end user, you're going to be calling on start. Um, and then when the end user is able to like interact with it, like it's in the foreground, it's going to be on resume. And so going down the other way, when it when the screen comes out of the foreground, let's say like some pop up happens, um, on pause is going to be called. And then when it goes away, it's going to be on stop. And then finally, when you either like close the app or otherwise somehow destroy the screen on the screen. Uh, where's your background? Um, so yeah, kind of like what I just said there, each activity has its own life cycle. And then there are the six callbacks that occur every time we transition between one of those stages. Um, yeah, we'll go through this quickly. On create, um, is triggered every time the system creates activity for the first time. Um, and what you're going to put in there is basically like the application startup logic. So like what you need to like the find view by ID stuff, um, like all the buttons and like all that stuff. And then right after that, on start will be invoked, uh, which causes it to be visible to the user. Um, so any code that you want to run after initialization. But before like it comes to the foreground, you put in on start. Then on resume is when it's like when the user is able to actually interact with it. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. And then when it comes out of the foreground, <clears throat> let's say like another like screen pops up like a phone call, um, on pause will be called. Uh -huh. And then further down there, when the screen is um has gone away for the user, on stop will be called. Um, yeah. And then finally on destroy is when the screen goes away, like is, sorry, is destroyed. Like that's an actual, uh, term for that, I guess. Um, so yeah, any questions on that? Go ahead. They're called automatically. So, um, they're all callbacks in the sense that when you like navigate through your screens on an app. Um, and the Android like operating system will figure out all the actual stuff itself. But if you want some extra logic, you put it in your all these uh, different callbacks. So um, 
yeah i mean that's just what like a callback means i guess it's like what happens after like all that stuff yeah good question uh yeah any other questions okay um so intents are basically one of the ways we can communicate within our app and outside of our app so um Right now, we haven't had any way to basically navigate to different screens. We've only been working with like one screen, and uh, that's not very good for if you want to build like something actually useful. So what you're going to use is something called an intent, um, and that defines communication between app components or from inside to outside the app. And there's two types of that: um, explicit and implicit. So explicit is used to launch other activities in your app, let's say like you have one screen, that's your home screen, and you want to navigate to like the like the settings screen or something like that, um, you'd be using an explicit intent. Um, and that's going to basically like navigate you to somewhere else or like do, do whatever you want within your app. Implicit intents are often used for like stuff outside your app where you want to request um, an action. And then there's many ways to actually perform that action. And it's really like, you're really basing it on your desired result. Um, so like for now that might be a little confusing, but we can, well, it'll be, it'll be clearer later. Um, so for an explicit app, like when you click the uh, heart button there, it's gonna give you, well, that seems like an outdated version of Instagram, but like um, when you click that, it's gonna give you like a new screen that's gonna pop up. And that's an explicit intent that you're using to navigate from the home screen to a different screen there. Um, and the implicit intent is kind of like saying, um, let's say something you want to do is share uh, information to Drive or add it to Facebook or like share on Spotify. Those are all implicit intents um, because like, let's say you want to share something via email, your phone might have like very different like default um, email services. So you might want to share with Gmail or um, like some other like the Apple mail. Um, you, you need to define that with implicit intent. I guess you won't have Apple mail if you're using Android, but yeah. Um, yeah. So explicit intents, the syntax is a little weird. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to memorize this. I would instead look in the textbook for the actual like nitty gritty syntax. But, um, basically like the most important use of explicit intents are to, to launch other activities in your app. So like if you say val intent equals intent, the two parameters, one is this, basically just referring to the current context as in like the current screen. And then the target activity is the one you want to navigate to. And you need to do some special syntax there because like underneath Kotlin is the JVM and it's like Java based. So you need to like, the, you need to pass in the class and you need to like say like this like colon colon class at Java like jump, um, but yeah. So the key idea there is you pass in the current activity using this, and you pass in the target activity and the second one using that syntax. Um, and uh, so target activity can be named anything, but like whatever your activity is also named. You just need to like use the class dot Java syntax. Um, yeah, and then for extras, so you can see down there it's like intent dot put extra. Let's say you want to navigate within your app, but you want to um, basically add some extra additional information. Like let's say you have Instagram and you want to navigate to a person's profile, but you don't know like what the username of the profile is. You need you would need to pass it in as an extra. That's like an extra parameter for your intent. Um, and it's like a key value pair there. So the first one is the key. So that'd be like username, eatery name there. Um, whatever. And then the actual value is the second parameter there, open shields. And so when you when you finish all that, you're going to call start activity, and that's going to actually perform your navigation. And then once you actually get to the um, second screen, in order to retrieve your extra that you put in there in the first in the first like block, you're going to call you're going to first get the attempt, um, then you're going to get the extra, and then you're going to get string. And then it looks weird because it's like get intent is like not called on some class, but basically you're able to, the activity keeps track of all the intents that come into it. And so when you call get intent, you're going to get the current one that you like 
you navigate it to first. Um, so yeah. And so like how it plays out like visually, um, when you click on something on your first screen, it's gonna create an intent. Um, you might like call some function in the, sorry, like retrieve some values from the database. Um, that's like the backend class really. Um, and then once you have your information using your key that you presumably put as an extra, you can display your new screen here. Um, yeah, so implicit intents um, perform an action based on a desired result, as we know. Um, and they're often used when like there's multiple ways to do something. Um, so let's say Google provides a long list of different kinds of intents. So when you start a phone call, there's different ways to like actually like implement a phone call on a like the phone app on a phone. Um, but uh, it's always going to like use the same protocol. It's always going to listen for the same like implicit intent. Uh, same thing with sharing information to another app or like opening the browser. You might have Google, you might have like whatever other browser, um, but it's listening for the same like implicit intent. Also taking a photo. Um, yeah, any, any questions on that? I kind of flew through it, but. I think we're good. So implicit intents, um, a little more into the syntax. Um, honestly, I don't even remember how to do this. Um, but basically like the, you're gonna choose like from a list of intents that you can use because in the end you need to find like some sort of protocol for actually like sending an email or like uh, making a phone call. Um, so you you can find this like in the um, Android documentation and it's gonna be a list of one, all like a bunch of in implicit intents you can use. So action underscore send to is like sending an email and then to like specify the uh, like data you need to send an email you would use like this syntax here where you're passing in the data and then putting extras like the um, email and the subject. And these are like pretty explicit here um, because that's only for the sending emails intent. And then you're gonna start activity. And then like, just because like, I don't expect anyone to memorize all that. Like here is the Android like documentation um, just look up like Android developer documentation and then like common intents. Cause this will give you like all the syntax for like any implicit intent that you could need. So this one is like creating an alarm and then like you just copy paste that and it'll probably work. Um, creating a timer. Um, I imagine send to is in here as well. Yeah. And then this is exactly like what we wrote on the um, slides. So yeah. Any questions on that? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, of course. Um, so your main activity is like, the entry point for your Android app, that's like your home screen, I guess. So if you want another screen, you're going to need to create another activity. And you can do that by, if you have Android Studio open, you like you can right click on your source file, you, know, you can say like new and then activity. And then that you'll be able to create new activities there. And then you can play around with the intents from there. Yeah, good question. Um, I'm gonna do a time check. So the manifest is kind of like your Android apps like map, I guess. It's it's gonna tell like the compiler where to look for everything about your actual app. So um, one of these things is defining like all the activities that you have here. Um, for each activity you have, you have to write it in the manifest. So you know, so like the compiler knows what all, all, all your activities are. Um, and then there's like other, uh, information about the app, like the application's name, um, uh, any permissions that you requested and like other software requirements, like the API, uh, version. And yeah, so whenever you create a new project, 
um, the manifest will be created for you. And I'll, if anyone has any questions from where to find it, I think it's just under a folder called Android Manifest. But yeah, you might need to change something in here. So that's just good to know. And then the app launcher, um, basically you need to specify the entry point. So like in Java, there's like the public static void main um, that tells the compiler like where to start your code. Um, and it's kind of the same like, uh, functionality here where you have to say that the um yeah oh you have to specify what your entry point for the activity is mm -hmm. oh it's ends like this here uh, any questions on that it's all kind of foreign for now but if time permits we can get into like a little demo just to see what's up um so yeah permissions so these uh permission declarations go in the manifest so they'll go like somewhere here oh you can see it up here actually where you ask for permissions to the find location um but yeah so common permissions that you want to request for are like location um your wi-fi or like a user storage um and you all you need to specify that beforehand in the Android manifest. Like you can't like run your app and then like um, ask for permissions that the compiler doesn't expect. You have to, you have to specify what you're gonna ask for like beforehand. Um, and there's two types of them, normal and dangerous. Normal, the ones that um, will just be granted to you um, if you put them in the manifest, but dangerous are the ones that the user will get a little pop-up to grant it to them. So dangerous permissions are like the, um, like the find location of the uh, phone or like um, some other like local storage, for instance. So when you grant like runtime permissions to the to the app, um, it'll get you'll give us like this little pop up here. Um, and yeah. Pretty good. And so like when you write permissions into your app, you kind of need to like think about all the different ways that your user can interact with those permissions. So like after the pop-up, the user can always deny like um, granting you the permissions, in which case like you'll have to handle like what you do if you have no permissions. Like if your app won't be able to run, you might need to just like keep throwing this like pop-up saying um, this app won't work without the permissions. And then like, if you only allow permissions with the app open, like if you need permissions all the time, you also need to consider that as well. And so like, here's like, just like a quick flow chart to think about um, how you want to write permissions into your app. So if you can do something without permissions, you shouldn't ask for them. Cause that's just like, that's bad on your part and that's bad for the user. Um, but if you do need to provide, if you do need permissions, to write at whatever function you want to write. Um, you need to declare the permissions in the manifest. And then um, you need to further ask yourself like whether this permission needs to be granted at runtime. Like if you need the, if you need dangerous permissions basically. So if the, it's not dangerous, then you don't need to do anything else. But if it is dangerous, you'll need to write some extra code to um, request the user uh, using like a little pop-up. Um, so the, how that occurs is we're going to basically use like a library to help us with that because it's pretty annoying just doing it on like the Android base, but it, we're going to use a library called easy permissions, and this can all be found in the textbook. So I'm going to try it and go through it quickly. Um, but basically what happens is that you're going to override a function, um, that Android usually uses, and you're going to use, um, easy permissions code instead. Um, so you can see here, on request permissions result is usually something that the Android operating system calls, but we're gonna override it and then use easy permissions library instead here. And then this is like all the syntax for it. Um, so you're gonna declare the permissions with the app manifest. I think we're cool with that. And then the one thing you'll need to know is that if you need multiple um, permissions, you need to assign them like different values so that easy permissions knows like 
um, which, which permissions were granted. Um, so you can see back here uh, in the syntax, there's a request code. This request code needs to map to some unique number per uh, permission. And then in on create, you're gonna say like, if we don't have permissions for this uh, type of permission, um, then we're gonna request it. And then like the request code is the request code for the location. Um, the rationale is like the message that comes with the pop-up. And then the perms are the um the actual like uh like permission object, I guess. So you can see like these two line up, the perms here and the perms here, and the request code is what you defined yourself. And then at the very end, you can write like a callback for after your permission is granted. So if you annotate it with at after permission granted, um you can basically use any function and then write like uh, code for that can be called after the permission is granted. All right. Um, yeah, I kind of flew through that. Um, we're not going to be touching on permissions for now. That might be more homework three. Um, but if anyone has any issues with that, I would look at the textbook for all the different like weird syntax bits. Um, so yeah. I'm going to try and get like a little code through working. Um, so basically, like what I believe like Andrew was talking about, right? We've only been using like the main activity so far, but um, we're gonna try and create a new activity. It'll be like a new screen, and then we're gonna try and pass data back and forth between it. Um, so yeah, let me pull up Android Studio. Oh, like to a new project. Hopefully, okay, so. This. Um, so yeah, so the first thing we want to do when you create a new activity is you can right click on your source file here or source folder. When you right click, it's going to bring up this uh, long list or long drop down. And if you click new, and then see here, there's activities. And you can just create an empty views activity. Kind of the same way you initialize the project. So we're going to name it um, edit activity. And you can see the corresponding layout name, like the name of the XML, is going to be changed as well. But you can also change that yourself. Um, and yeah, let's click finish there. So now we have two activities, you can see. And then in the resource folder, you can also see that the two XMLs have been created. So right now they're pretty blank. Um, so I'm gonna try and just throw something on quickly here. Uh, Hello World is already there. I'm just gonna put the button on. So this is our main activity. And if we go back to the main activity, I can then grab um, the views using find view by ID. So I think we're all pretty familiar with that by now. Um, let's do... Just run that. But yeah, so basically what we want to do 
for our little demo here, demo here is that there's going to be a uneditable text and then a button. And then what our button, what we want to do with our button is basically navigate to our edit activity screen. And there, there's going to be an, oops, there's, there, there's going to be a editable text field where we can edit whatever the text is. And then when we click the button on the edit activity, it's going to send us back to the home screen where we're going to see the updated um, text. Uh, uh, let me fix this real quick. But yeah, I mean, while that's compiling, I can kind of go over like what we've already done before. So we can give an on-click listener to our button because we're never going to want to do that. And then in that on-click listener, we're going to first, um, this is the main activity, yeah. So we're going to create an intent to basically navigate to the edit, edit activity. So how we're going to do that is we can say um, intent, uh, let's say that we're gonna say the first parameter is this, and the second parameter is the edit activity class. And you see that works out. And then when we click start activity, that should navigate us to the edit, edit activity screen. So let's see what goes on. So when you click this button, you can see it gave you like a little animation and now we're on like the uh, new activity. I don't know if the back button works. Oh, it does actually. So yeah. So, but right now there's nothing on the edit activity screen. So we're gonna try and build that out quickly. I have an editable text field here and I'm gonna put another button there to take us back and pass like the data through. Oh, sh okay, cool. Um, so if you run that again, just quickly. Yeah, so this is our main screen, a quick button. This is our new screen. Uh, this is not going to do anything right now. So we didn't give it any business logic. So if you go to the edit activity, we're going to do the same thing we did in main. Uh, let me just see what the IDs are. Edit text text. Edit text. And but, uh, edit button. So we go here and like a book, broken record at this point. Um, button, button equals find the ID. And you can see that you, you're going to need to use different IDs between activities um, because the R, like the resource class R, is able to access all of them.
I'm going to add an on-click listener to this one as well. Um, and we can do the same, we can kind of do the same thing with the intent, but I'm actually going to introduce something else that I touched on on this slide here. And it's called register for activity results. So like the intent we see here is kind of like a pretty explicit way to navigate and pass um, values around. But instead, we might want to use something called register for activity result. And then like it's much easier to actually fetch the like computations we do in at activity. So if we go here and we say um so intent launcher. What we're going to create is basically a launcher for our intent. Instead of start activity, we're going to use something else. Because start activity just like navigates normally. Uh, register for activity result. Um, and I also don't remember the... Uh... Yeah, kind of weird. Oh. I think I might be missing some import. Let me sync the grid one. I'm gonna do this. Oh, um, should be fine. Interesting. That's interesting. I think, I think we can work around this for now. So we're short on time. And we'll just pass it in normally by using put extra. Um, and then if you remember the syntax, it's going to be like a key value pair. So we'll say the text is our key. And then our value will be whatever the actual text is. Um, not here, but uh, here. So start that, that, that. And then we, when we get here, we can say um, get intent. And I think it'll actually ask me to just use property access syntax. So you can just say even intent and it'll know what you're looking for. But intent dot extras dot uh, get string name. And extras might be null, so you might have to see that. So uh, oh, I think I said text actually, yeah. So is this. So now I'm called, like retrieving the extra information that I passed in through the intent, and I'm storing it in text. And that could be null, because it might be the case that I didn't actually pass in anything. Um, so we're gonna have to check that further down when we say like our, uh, edit text. Text. 
and we're going to use this um, nullable syntax here. So it's either text or um, something went wrong. So like help. Okay, so we can see how that works for now. We have a world. I click the button. It's going to um, in, like uh, take the data from the first activity and pass it on to the sec second activity using the intent. Um, let's see how we can send it back. Um, so ideally, you'd be using register for activity result, but I'm not sure why it's not showing up as defined. So we can kind of work around it by um, retrieving the intent um, back from edit activity in, within main activity. So we're going to say um, val edited, I don't know how to spell that, edited text equals the same intent, um, or it, it's actually new intent, but intent dot um, extras dot get string. I will see if there's text in that extra. Um, and if there is, then we're going to say text view uh, dot text equals, what does this actually work? I'm not actually sure. Because this is within on create, which is as we learned in the Android lifecycle, is only called when we first create it. So we can see if this works for now. Um, edited text. Or this is notable. Oh, let's see if we can just default it to the original text. Let's see if that works. Oh, um, and then I need to write the intent here as well. Uh, go back to the main activities. Extra. Um, we're going to put in a key of text and we're going to pass in whatever we edited it in there. Um, next. Okay. Uh, let's see if this works for now. It might not work, in which case we'll need to play around with the callbacks for like on start and stuff like that. Um, so hello world, Hit the button. Oh, we might need to because this this won't work. Yeah, so recreate the app. Hello world, click the button. Let's see, delete some of this. Just click hello. Uh, oh, we didn't start the activity. Yeah, my bad. Start activity and pass an intent. Try that again. Hello world. We're a little more terse, so we're gonna say hi. Uh, the button. And yeah, so it's not going to show up here. Yeah, so we might need to instead use one of the other callbacks for the Android lifecycle. So, we override um, on on resume, I think might be better here. Uh, yeah, super dot on resume. Yeah, makes sense. Let's pass in this intent getting stuff here. Oh, whoops. This is actually the edit. This is the main. Let's move this to. Uh, hmm. 
And then we're going to move the intent retrieving stuff into here as well. See if that works. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, well, not sure why that's not working. Um, but we did get to see a lit a little bit of the functionality between at least passing the data one way from the main activity to the edit activity. Um, ideally, we would be able to use register for activity result. Um. I'm not sure why it's not working. Let me see what I had before. And the, the lecture is over, by the way. So if you guys need to leave, then feel free. Um, but let me just maybe start again. Yeah, not, not exactly sure what's the issue, but ideally you'd be able to write this kind of syntax here where it's um, register for activity result. You're gonna pass in like this special contract for it. And then within this, you can say um, the result of whatever you get from starting the activity is um, this callback basically. Um, so, and then when you set that to intent launcher, you can use that instead of start activity here. And this will basically register those callbacks or whatever comes back. And that is probably why mine wasn't working because you need this callback here. So, but if you look in edit text, it's kind of the same stuff here, except instead of start activity from edit text, you're going to use set result and then finish. Finish will destroy that activity and kick you back to main activity with the results. Um, so yeah. I'm going to see why mine wasn't working, and then I'll post that code. Otherwise, I can also post this one that was working earlier. So yeah. Um, thank you guys for coming to the lecture. Sorry, we went over time. It was a pretty packed one. Um, if you guys have any other questions, the...